वेलकम टू दर्स न्यूमेरिकल लीन राज्य ब्रेड अप्लीकेशन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव थर्टी फर्स्ट लेक्चर बिफोर गोइंग टू दिस थर्टी फर्स्ट लेक्चर लेटस क्विकली रिकॉल वॉट वी डिड इन दीवियस लेक्चर वी आर ट्राइंग टू डू जनरलाइज रियल स्क्वायर फॉर्म फॉर मेकिंग द मैट्रिक्स factorization we have already seen the factorization involves two steps step 1 already we did it now we are going to have a stage 2 that is essentially step 2 so what we did in this step stage 1 is the matrix a can be written as q1 transpose a z that is hopper has an arc so it is unreduced the matrix b is equal to q1 transpose b z upper triangular matrix the basic idea now is to apply an implicit q r step of ab inverse without ever completely forming this matrix explicitly that means let us look at into the iterative process of qz algorithm in step 1 what we did is compute the first column of n that is C minus alpha one times of i, C minus alpha two times of i, where C is a b inverse, and alpha one, alpha two are shortly chosen shifts. In step two, find a householder matrix Q one such that Q one times of n e one. is a multiple of e1 in step 3 form q1 times of a q1 times of b now in step 4 transform should simultaneously q1 times of a to an upper heisenberg matrix a1 and q1 b to an upper triangular matrix b1 that is find orthogonal matrices q and z such that q times of q1 into a of z will be equal to a1 that is what is called upper heisenberg matrix and q times of q1 times of b of z is equal to b1 which is the upper triangular matrix now look at the implementation of step 1 computation of the first column of the capital n the real bottleneck in implementing the whole algorithm is in computing the first column of c minus alpha 1 i c minus alpha 2 i without forming explicitly fortunately this can be done how this can be done first note that a is upper heisenberg b is upper triangular this first column of n contains at most three non zero entries in the first three places so that is n1 is equal to capital n e1 which is c minus alpha 1 i c minus alpha 2 i times of e1 will be equal to x y z 0 0 etc transpose to compute x y and z all we need to know is the first two columns of 
C, which can be obtained just by inverting the 2 by 2 leading principle submatrix of B inverse. The all B inverse does not need to be computed. Thus, if C1 and C2 are the first two columns of C is equal to AB inverse. C is equal to A times of B inverse. Then C1 comma C2 is nothing but A1 comma A2 multiplied with B11, B12, 0, B22 whole inverse. Where AI is equal to I is equal to 1, 2 are the first two columns of matrix A. Note that C1 has at most two non-zero entries and C2 has at most three non-zero entries. Let C is equal to C11, C21, 0, 0 transpose and C2 is equal to C12, C22, C32, 00, 0 etc. transpose. Then it is easy to see that this matrix can be written as XYZ will be equivalent to C11 minus alpha, C11 minus alpha 2, etc. C12 times of C21. And second will be C21, C11 minus alpha 2 plus C21 times of C22 minus alpha 1 and so on and so forth. Then you will have lastly C21 times of C32. Let us look at into this example. Let us consider the matrix A is equal to so 4 by 4 matrix and B is also equivalent to 4 by 4 matrix. The 2 by 2 leading principle submatrix of B that is 1 2 0 1 C1 is equal to 1 2 0 0 transpose C2 is minus 1 minus 3 minus 1 0 transpose. Choose alpha 1 is equal to 1, alpha 2 is equal to 1, then x is equal to minus 2, y is equal to minus 8, z is equal to 2. Implementation of this step 2 is, since the first columns of n1 of n that is C minus alpha 1i, C minus alpha 2i has at most 3 non-zero entries. The householder matrix Q1 that transforms N1 into a multiple of E1 as the form like this. So Q1 is equal to Q1 trans cap 0, 0, I n minus 3, where Q1 cap is 3 by 3 householder matrix. Implementation of this step 4 is computation of A1 and B1. The matrices Q1 transpose A and Q2 transpose B. Q1 transpose A and Q1 transpose B now have the following structure as illustrated with n is equal to 6 in the following. This plus designates possible fill in as we did it in the previous lecture. So we will have A is equal to Q1 times of A, then you will have a non zero entries. and 0 entries and this is possible fill in. Of course this is a sparse matrix. And look at this B q1 times of b. So this is non-zero entries, 
these are all zeros and these two are possible fill in possible fill in that is both the heisenberg form a and the triangular form b are now lost in that there is now fill in at 3 1 position position of a are 2 1 position and 3 1 and 3 2 position positions of b the job now at hand is to cleverly chase away these unwanted zeros to restore the original heisenberg form of a and the triangular form of b so this is important this is done iteratively as shown in the below so what we do is for this we apply a householder matrix z1 z1 is householder matrix to the right of matrix b to eliminate 3 1 position 3 2 position entries followed by another householder matrix z2 to the right of eliminated 2 1 entry so the matrix b is so these are all non zeros these are all zeros these two are fill in so when you apply z1 it becomes and these are all zeros and this is fill in and z2 is so these are all non zeros these are all zeros these are all zeros then update the matrix a so the matrix a is these are all non zeros these are all zeros this is the fill in and when you apply z1 z2 these are all non zeros and these are all zeros and these three are fill in apply a householder matrix q to the left of a to eliminate the 3 1 position 4 1 position entries so this is the matrix a see that here these are all non zeros these are zeros and these are all fill in and here non zeros and this is the fill in and when you update this matrix b b will be these are all non zeros and rest are all zeros and with this q2 so this will become zero non zeros and this is fill in at this point the sub matrices of the current a and b enclosed by the boxes have the same structure as that of the original matrices 
Q on A and Q on B. The problem is now deflated. So we can now work with these sub matrices and the process can be continued until the Heisenberg triangular structure of the pair AB is restored. In view of the above discussion, let us now summarize one iterative step of this QZ algorithm. So what is the input you have? Matrix A is R of N1, an under-reduced upper Heisenberg matrix and second is B belongs to R of N by N, an upper triangular matrix. So upper triangular matrix upon Heisenberg matrix. What is the output you do expect? The orthogonal matrices Q and Z such that A1 is equal to Q, Q transpose AZ upper Heisenberg matrix and B1 is equal to Q transpose BZ, this is upper triangular matrix. Choose the shifts alpha 1 and alpha 2. Choose the shifts alpha 1 and this is alpha 2. This is alpha 2 actually. There is an error. Compute the first column N that is C minus alpha 1 I, C minus alpha 2 I, where C is AB inverse without explicitly forming B inverse. Let C1, C2 be the first two columns of the matrix C, then C1, C2 is equal to A1, A2, B11, B12, 0, B22. The three non-zero entries of the first column of N are given by X is equal to this one, X is equal to C11 minus A1, C11 minus A2, etc. Y is equal to C21 times of C11 minus A2 plus C21, C22 minus of A11. Z is equal to C21 times of C32, like this. The first column of N, that is N1, which is XYZ00 old transpose. Find a householder matrix. Q1 such that Q1 times of N1 will be of this form. So these are all zeros. This is the only one which is non-zero. Form Q1 times of A and Q1 times of B. Transform the matrices Q1 times of A, Q1 times of B respectively into an upper Heisenberg matrix A1 and an upper triangular matrix B1 by orthogonal equivalence in the way shown previously. Creating orthogonal matrices Q2 through Qn minus 1 and Z1 through Zn minus 1. Obtaining the transformation matrices, the transforming matrices Q, Z are obtained as follows. The matrix Q is equal to Q1, Q2, Qn minus 1. The matrix Z is equal to Z1, Z2, Zn minus 1. Note that Q has the same first row as Q1. So now it is interesting to see what is the flop count. One QZ iteration step requires about 22 n square flops. If Q and Z are to be accumulated, then an additional 8 n square, 13 n square flops respectively will be required. Choosing the shifts, the double shift Q1 and alpha 2 at QZ step can be taken as the eigenvalues of the lower 2 by 2 submatrix of C is equal to AB inverse. The 2 by 2 lower submatrix of C can be computed without explicitly forming B inverse. So what is the algorithm used for this? 
the complete QZ algorithm is input is A is R of MN, A belongs to R of N over N, then the B belongs to R of N over N. So, what is the output you do expect? A real square form of A, T an upper triangular matrix, the pair R comma T contains the eigenvalues of the matrix A comma B. So, what is the step one we will do? Transform the matrix AB into Heisenberg triangular pair by orthogonal equivalence assuming that A is unreduced. A is equal to Q transpose AZ the upper Heisenberg matrix and B is equal to Q transpose BZ upper triangular matrix. In the step 2 what we do is iterate with the previous algorithm to reproduce AK, BK choosing the shifts for each iteration as described in the previous step. Now in step 3 monitor the convergence of the sequence AK and BK and this AK is the square form, real square form as we discussed in the previous lecture and BK will be a upper triangular matrix. What is the remark over here is, in a computational selling, it will be necessary to monitor the subdiagonal entries of matrix A and the diagonal entries of the matrix B in each iteration step to see if a decoupling is possible. The same iteration criteria for deflation as used for the QR iteration algorithm in previous lectures can be used. So, it is interesting to see what is the flop count. The above algorithm requires about 30 NQ flops. The formation of QZ if required needs respectively another 16 NQ, 20 NQ flops as we see in the example. So, round of properties is the QZ iteration algorithm is as stable as the QR iteration algorithm. It can be shown that the computed R and S say satisfy this criteria that is Q naught transpose A plus C times of Z naught is equal to R hat or Q naught times of transpose B plus F Z naught is equal to S hat where Q naught Z naught are orthogonal matrices and norm of E is equal to mu times of norm of A and norm of f is equal to mu times of norm of b where mu is the machine precision as we see in the I mean numerical computation. Then the computation of generalized Rigner value vectors once an approximate generalized Rigner value lambda is computed the corresponding generalized Rigner vector v can be computed using the inverse iterative process as before. So, what is the algorithm? Computation of a generalized algorithm vector that is input is A belongs to R of M N N and B will be R of N N and approximate eigenvalues of lambda of the pencil is A minus lambda B. Output is an approximate eigenvector corresponding to the value lambda. Choose an initial eigenvector V naught. Step 2 is for k is equal to 1 to etc do solve a minus lambda b times of vk is equal to bv minus 1 and vk is equal to vk hat upon norm of vk hat that is 2 norm that is 2 norm. So, remark on solving a minus lambda b vk bv minus 1 is in solving this equation substantial savings can be made by exploiting the Heisenberg triangulation structure which we see in stage 1 of the just concluded algorithm. So, the QZ algorithm note that for a given value of lambda, the matrix A minus lambda B is Heisenberg matrix. Thus, at each iteration only a Heisenberg system needs to be solved. So, that is the special advantage of this method. So, we can see from this example, look at over here this matrix, very bigger value multiplied with this bigger value. So, when you multiply the smaller value, this is a small B matrix. So, lambda 1 is a generalized eigenvalue of A minus lambda B. 
that is 1.9508 and v0 is equal to this value. k is equal to 1 solve for v1 that is a minus lambda 1 b times so v1 is v0. So then v1 will become v1 upon norm of v1 time. So this will become like this. So therefore, today what we learned in this lecture is we try to see the stage 2 of the QZ algorithm and what is the flop count, how it will make advantages in making the matrix factorization for solving the systems. So thank you very much for hearing this lecture. I am sure that uh, you might have got some insight into the QZ algorithm and hope that uh, we would make able to make more clear in the next lecture. Thank you very much.